Today on Reese Dixon, I'm showing you how to take a quilt top and turn it into this beautiful finished play quilt. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com. So it seems like it was just a little while ago in YouTube time, but it's been a very long time since I started this quilt. Like a mm, year and a half, two years? I've lost track. But I finally finished it and I'm going to show you how you can take a pretty quilt top and turn it into an actual quilt. A quilt begins with what we call a quilt sandwich and we call it that because the batting, the stuff that goes in the middle of the quilt, is sandwiched between the back of the fabric and the front of the fabric. So to start this you have to take your backing fabric and with the right side facing the floor you stretch it as taut as you can, make sure everything's nicely ironed, you get all the wrinkles out, and tape it down to the floor so that it cannot move. And then on top of that, you place your batting, and on top of that, you place your quilt top. And once you get everything lined up and smooth, then you can start basting, which is what we do to keep all these layers in place and make it so that nothing can shift around on us while we're sewing you want to make sure that when you're doing your machine quilting nothing can fold over on itself and uh, you're sewing pieces to other pieces that you don't mean to do and you don't want it skewed either so that you have this beautiful quilt top and then the back of your fabric is all you know cattywampus so to do that i just use a ton of safety pins and this gets the job done just great the old school hardcore quilters will actually do a little sewing here but I am not above a, uh, a little pinning. So you can see that I'm pretty thorough because I have a habit of letting things shift on me. So I want to preempt that. And you can also see that I did not put any safety pins through any area of the applique, none of the roads, none of our trees, because anytime you use that fusible web, that glue that we used on the back of all of these pieces, if you poke a safety pin through it, you'll be making a hole that will stay. So I don't plan on doing any quilting over the top of the machine applique, so I'm not going to put any holes there because they won't get covered. You'll just see this puncture mark there forever. Um, now, when it comes to the actual quilting, I just use my regular old sewing machine. There's some really fancy ways you can do this with fancy machines, but that's not how I roll. I just use the same old sewing machine I made this quilt on. And it's just a matter of kind of rolling up the side that you're not quilting to shove it through your machine. And it, it's if you've done a lot of basting, you can. I, I've quilted king size quilts on my little sewing machine. So the first thing you have to do is decide how you're going to quilt it. This is just as much a part of the design of your quilt as the fabrics you've chosen or the pattern you've chosen. Um, quilts can be just made in the quilting. Um, for this one, I'm keeping it simple. It's just a plain old play quilt. So I'm doing um, what's called a stipple technique. And you might not be able to see it on camera because I'm doing it in a thread that matches this background. But it's a method of all over quilting where you just kind of guide it through the machine and you just make a bunch of loops and you don't want your loops to cross, but there's really no pattern to it. It's just kind of a free form all over quilting. If you want to create some kind of a pattern that kind of um, outlines your roads or highlights something, or you can even, you know, and you, there are no limits. You can do whatever your imagination takes you. And you could just use a pencil and, hide, and you know, draw whatever you want to sew and then use your sewing machine to follow that line. So you can do straight lines if you want. You can do curves. Like I said, the, I mean, the possibilities are endless. But this is a great way to start if you've never done machine quilting before because you really cannot make a mistake with stipple quilting. The only guidelines are you want kind of a uniform um, texture, so you don't want a ton of tight, small loops in one side and big loops in the other. You want your loops to be roughly the same shape or size at least. And, um, and then try not to cross over, but if you do occasionally, nobody's ever gonna see it. So in order to do this, you need a free motion quilting foot, which I have here. Um, and it's just a little, it's got this little spring and it enables your machine to just um, 
move around smoothly without dragging on the fabric. You'll also want to check your um, in your manual for your sewing machine because most of them will have an option to take the feed dogs, which are the little teeth that kind of pull your fabric through, and you can set them down so that it'll be smooth and you have the control over moving your fabric through your machine. So feed dogs down, use a free motion quilting foot, just like this, and then you just go wherever you want. If, um, like this is a little one, and so it, it, unless you have wrist problems, it'll probably be pretty easy to machine quilt. But like I said, I've done king-sized quilts, and that can be really hard on your wrist to maneuver all this fabric. So I have these little gloves that I find really helpful for bigger projects, or like I said, if you have wrist issues. And they're just little cotton gloves, but they've got these little dots all over them. Um, and it's like those non-slip socks your kids wear, you know? And so this just gives you a little bit of friction to get some, um, some traction on your quilt and get a good grip as you're pushing it around. So with those things, um, you can do whatever you want. And if you don't want to buy a special foot, you just don't make the free motion quilting. You can just go straight lines and use the same old foot that you've been sewing with if you don't want to make an investment. So once I do that, then we've got to finish the edges. But I've got a lot of quilting ahead of me before we get to that point. So I'm gonna have some fun and, um, and just play and doodle on my quilt with this free motion foot. What I've done is trimmed these edges. I've got all the quilting done. And so now I've, I've trimmed it so it's nice and square. And I just have to cover up these raw edges. So I'm gonna do a very basic binding. And technical quilters, are very particular about binding. This is one of the areas where you can really spot a the craft of quilting. And so I'm just going to show you a very like get it done, you know, utilitarian method. So what I've got here is just fabric that I cut to three inches wide. And I cut, you know, a full strip, the full width of the fabric that I had. And then I sewed it to the next strip of three inch fabric. And I just sewed it with a straight seam. The technical quilters would be cutting this on the bias, which means diagonally, and they would be sewing it together like this on the bias. That, per, that gives you just a lot of flexibility. But since I'm just going you know, straight around the corners, just doing it straight works fine for me. So what I'm gonna do is start by folding this in half like so and I'm going to give myself a good foot where I'm going to leave that loose so that I can join it up when I get to the end. So starting about here I'm going to match this up on the front of the quilt on just any old side. So with the two pieces together you'll have your the raw edges match the raw edges of your quilt and that fold goes towards the middle. What this does is create a double layer of the fabric that wraps around the edge and since the edge is the part that gets the most wear and tear, having that double layer just makes it that much more durable. So I'm going to go on my sewing machine and with the same quarter inch seam allowance that I've been using all along, I'm going to uh, sew this all the way down and then stop when I get to the corner and then I will show you how we can pivot and turn that corner to make a nice mitered edge. Here I am at the corner and I've sewed all the way to the edge except for that quarter of an inch that will become the next side. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do, trying to do this one-handed, is lift up my presser foot and raise that needle and then fold the fabric at a 45 degree angle like so that it's parallel with this new side that I will be sewing like that and then right here I'll bend it back down I'm try to do this with the other hand so you can see back down on itself to match with that line. So see, it makes this little mitered corner that you're gonna push down 
and then oops and then once you get that all lined up I'm gonna turn that and put my needle down and start sewing again now since I was doing this one-handed I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna straighten it all out before I actually start sewing but do you see how I turned that corner by making that triangle let me to show you one more time so I come through on this end I'm gonna go straight bend it straight up to kind of make that triangle there and then straight down this would all be so much easier if I had a cameraman and then straight down to turn that corner making that little triangle pocket there and I'm gonna keep sewing so I'll do that for all four corners and go back to where I started leaving myself about a foot foot and a half um, before I reach the other end so that I can finish it off so I've gone around the entire quilt and mitered all those corners and now I have to join these end pieces together so we have to open that fold up and sew them together and we need to do it just as just long enough to meet the quilt so what I'm going to do is aiming kind of in the middle of that space so that I have a little flexibility when I go to try to shove this in my sewing machine I'm gonna open that fold up and kind of fold both of those back a little bit like so and I'm doing this really crudely because again one-handed but you can kind of see how I'm trying to find the place where those two ends meet that uh, on that quilt top so where that point is right there that I can't get to line up looking through the viewfinder there we go so I butt those up against each other and then I'll just take a pin and pin that together just right like that so then I can take this to my sewing machine and sew right where I make that pin down those two strips to join them together like all of the other pieces and once that's done I can cut off the extra and fold that back up and then zip finish that up to get that binding all the way in place with your binding all sewn on then you just have to flip it over and sew it to the other side there are ways you can do this on your sewing machine but I prefer to do this by hand and so when I just start to fold over the binding you can see how that corner just kind of goes automatically that little miter we made just wants to fold so I'm going to fold this over and just make sure that it covers that seam of where we attach the binding and then sew in place I've just got a needle and thread here with and it's mine is doubled over that's just personal preference and a knot at the bottom and so then I'm just going to go up through all those layers. Oh, I always make my thread very long, which means there are knots at the beginning. Okay, so then you just keep stitching and you stitch this in place all the way around. So this is great to do in front of the television I like to enter winter with a bunch of quilts ready to bind so that I can just sack out and do a little stitching like so so as you're stitching once you get to that corner you're just going to want to fold that over it might take just a little bit of fiddling to get it to make a nice neat miter um, but just fold that in place. I like to take a couple of stitches right up in there just to keep everything nice and secure And then you just keep going all the way around until your quilt is done So a year and a half ago or so when I started this quilt I thought it was going to be for I don't know Christmas or a birthday or something And now this has been sitting on my shelf for so long and Addie has been waiting with anticipation I think I'm just going to give it to him so that he can play with it and not waste any more time. So I hope that this was inspiring to you to give quilting a try. It is not as intimidating as it sometimes comes across. And with just a few simple techniques, you can make something really beautiful that your kids will love 
and cherish. So if you have any questions, just leave me a comment and I'll help you out. Subscribe to the channel so that you can see lots more great ideas and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.